Hey guys, my name is Jan and today I will be showing you how to use the slider controls in After Effects. So first of all, here we have my After Effects composition. Um, right now I have a cinematic in there with a little motion track. I've got some shake on here, also known as wiggle to you. I have um, keyframed the scale to fit the, the beat. So down here you can see that every time there is a little beat in here, the shake automatically adjusts to it. So for example over here it's zooming in, going out with a smooth um, smooth transition, like put like that, like with a BJ curve. And today I will be showing you how to use a slider control to use these values and keyframes that you already set to um, optimize, for example, um, your brightness. So what you want to do is, um, I'll just close this here real quick, what you want to do is you ha you'll put the brightness effect on or whatever else you want to have a different effect. I'll put on some blur too. I'll just put on some, maybe some radial blur and set it, set the type to zoom. So right now here we have this nice little effect of um, the screen zooming in which looks really good since the uh, text is in the middle. So what we want to do is we want to keyframe this here automatically. So it goes from maybe around... maybe around 3 or 4 to 15, up to 15. And uh, we want to do that automatically. So what you can do is you can actually just click on the layer that you have, go to Effect, Go to Expression Controls, and here you have a couple of uh, different controls. You have the Angle Control, which basically controls the angle. That means, for example, 60 degrees, 360 degrees, whatever. Then you have the Checkbox Control, which is just a, con uh, a checkbox for the whole control um, layer. Then you have the Color Control, where you can pick a color. And if you have, for example, flares, you can uh, simply parent the color from the flare to the Color Control and the color will automatically change when changing the color on the color control layer. Then you have the layer control which basically controls which layer you're on. Then you have the point control. This is just a dot in the screen somewhere that you can control using it. And then you have the slider control. And today we will be using the slider control. So just click on slider control. So here you just have a normal slider. It can up to, yeah, pretty much endless and um, you can set a, different, a few different things here. So what we want to do first of all, you want to hold Alt and click on the stopwatch next to the slider and uh, it's going to refresh, it's going to uh, disable the refresh rate, whatever you want to call it. I'll just have to click on it again. So right down here we have the uh, actual expression. So this in here basically tells us that this is this effect called slider control and this is the um, this is the first one of its type. So if we want to, for example, parent it to the scale of this um, layer, since I've already done the scale manually, I'll just get the scale uh, keyframes to show up. Go to the point where it's at pretty much a zero or or one hundred in this case, since that is when it's just filling the full screen. Then you want to drag this little parenting um, dot over here and drag it onto the scale. So as you can see here, it will actually just take the value of the scale that we have and uh, use that for the slider. So as you can see here, the, slider's, uh, con sliders, the slider has turned red and that means that it's dependent on another value. And in this case, it is the same as the scale value. As you can see here, the scale is on 100 and the slider is on 100 as well. So if it goes up to 104 now, the slider will go up to 104 automatically. Now, you want, maybe want to re rename this slider control to, for example, um, maybe just control settings. So this is your control settings. Maybe we can even go a bit more into detail by saying brightness and contrast control. So as you can see here, this is the brightness and contrast control and it is going to re be responsible for this effect for brightness and contrast. What we want to do with the brightness and contrast is we want to make it go from, we want to make the brightness go from one, uh, from zero up to 20 
and uh, parallel it, we want the contrast to go from 0 up to 5, which is a pretty good mix, and then go down again. Now, if we just simply click on br the brightness and the contrast, and uh, parent those to the slider of the brightness and contrast control, it's going to go up to 100. The brightness is going to go up to 100 normally. So, um, this here goes to the scale, exactly, yeah. And if we just parented this here, like the, um, the brightness to the slider, then you can see that it'll go up to 100 and will go up to 105. So you can see the brightness can't go higher than 100, so that's why it stays fixed on 100. That is because the brightness controls itself are limited 100, just as the contrast is limited to 100 and minus 100, and the same for the brightness. So um, to change this value that we have here for the brightness and contrast control, we are just going to use a simple math function, actually really simple. You just want to go behind this transform and scale, so this value here is, uh, is being taken from the scale down here. And what you want to do is, for example, to go to 104. Like, for example, for, uh, for the scale here, we ha have it going from 100 up to 104. And we want uh, the, the values later on to be 0. And uh, for example, 20. So we have to find a mathematical function for that. Okay, so um, a pretty good function for this here would be, for example, if we just took the scale and set it to minus 100. Then you want to put you, you want to put that in uh, whatever it's called. I don't know what those little things here are called. Basically, it means that this. Um, mathematical subtraction is done first and then after that we want to divide the whole or we want to um, actually want to multiply this by 5 so in case that this here that the scale would be a hundred the uh, product in here the end result in here would be zero zero multiplied by five is still zero so the brightness would stay at zero and in case uh, we had 104 this would be four like the end result of it and it would be multiplied by 5, which makes 20, which is actually just what we're going for. So, for example, you can see over here, the brightness is on 0. And when it's going up to 104 scale, the brightness is going up to 20. So that's just what we wanted to do, and we perfectly achieved that. Now, what we can do for the, um, for the contrast is uh, pretty much the same. We just want to use a different slider. So what you can do is you can just go up here again, go to Effects, Expression Controls, Slider Control. Again, you want to take this slider, hold Alt while clicking the stopwatch, and want to drag the parenting control onto the scale. And now that we're on here, we can just like quickly think about what um, the function would look like for this. We could, for example, just use Pretty much the same method again, putting it to like uh, subtracting a hundred from it, and then multiplying it by one point two five. So that way, it well, it seems like that. Something doesn't work here, maybe it's still one dot two five. Yeah, that was pretty much it. Um, I have the uh, German version of After Effects, and uh, you can't, uh, I have the English version of After Effects, and you can't put a comma in there. You have to do it with a dot. I actually didn't know this, but as you can see, if I, if I just put in the the comma, it won't work. But if I put in the dot, um, the dot, the value will actually be correct. So as you can see here, it's going up from scale zero. Brightness 0, contrast 0, up to 104. Brightness 20, contrast 5, well at least the slider control of the contrast is at 5. And then it's going back down to um, scale 100 and the other values are 0 again. So that n because we've uh, basically um, set this value here first and everything else is parented to it, if we change this value here 
the other values will automatically change too. But since they are in a different relation, because you did the subtraction over here and multiplied it by 5, I wouldn't really suggest doing that at all, because it actually changes the value significantly. So, um, if you're using this uh, later on, this method, and uh, you want to you wanna try it out, um, I suggest um, trying to get the right values first, and then setting everything up. Because otherwise, if you set everything up, and then want to readjust the values, it can be quite hard at times. So now that you've done the um, other slider control, you can just call this here contrast control. Well, actually, I have to rename the other one because this here is brightness and contrast, just for the sake of it being right. Okay, and now we can go to brightness and contrast again, and we will just simply um, parent the contrast to the slider to add to the to the contrast col uh, to the contrast uh, slider. I've actually wrote something very dumb there, contrast color, which doesn't make any sense. And yeah, it's working perfectly. And now for the last part, for the radio blur, we're just going to do the same. We're going to create a new expression control, the slider control again. We're going to hit, hit the, uh, the stopwatch over there. And uh, since we have one over here, one, uh, the, for example, the uh, contrast slider is actually going from 0 to 5 always and back down. That is actually would be easier for us to use this instead of the scale going from 104 down to 100, then subtracting the 100 or whatever, and then multiplying it or dividing it. So we're just going to use the other, uh, the, we're just going to use the contrast control instead of the scale. So what you want to do is you just want to take the parenting tool and parent it to the contrast control. And then you can just multiply it by around 3. So the zoom will later on actually go from 0 to 15, which is just about perfect. Or maybe not 0, because 0 looks really awkward when it's going from, for example, the value 5 down to 0, because the blur will actually not be there anymore. So maybe just multiply it by 2.5, and um, then add maybe around 1.5 again. And since I did it wrong last time, you just have to write it with the dots. Okay. So it goes from 1.5 up to 14, which is pretty much what I was going for in the beginning. And now that you've done that, you're just going to go to the radial blur, um, click on um, the amount, hold alt, and click the stopwatch next to it. Then you want to drag the parenting control down, down to the slider, and as you can see here, I've already got a couple of sliders, and uh, if I hadn't renamed them properly, I wouldn't know which one to take, so always make sure that you rename them, otherwise you can get lost really easily. And we're just going to pair that to this slider down here, and as you can see here, it's doing the brightness and control and the, yeah, the blur automatically, and I only had to set up the keyframes once. Now this tutorial probably took quite a long time to make, to explain it. But once you, once you understood the basic concept behind it, it will help you save a lot of time and optimize your tasks, especially if you have a lot of different uh, um, effects over here. And if some of them have the same value, that's perfect, or, or need the same values, that's perfect for you, because you can actually just parent them to the same slider. So that will make it easier too. And um, yeah. Since we're just having, uh, since we also got the uh, radial blur on here uh, with the center point, which is actually a two dimensional coordinate system, we're just going to go over to the effect uh, panel, go to expression controls, and go to point control. So that's pretty much the same thing as before with the point control here, 
and uh, this can be pretty much anything. You can maybe motion track a point, then uh, put, put a null object on it, and the null object will move around, and then you just want to parent this value here, want to parent this to the uh, position of the null object, and that way you actually have the position of the null object on an effect, and then you can parent, for example, shine or the radial blur onto it. But since that is not necessary right now, I'm just gonna, not going to do it. I was just going to explain how you would use it um, if you had to put on two-dimensional two effects and wanted them to move around. So that was basically it. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. I was a bit nervous recording it, to be honest. And uh, with some messy things going on in the background. But I um, hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like and comment if you did, and give me some feedback. Thanks.